Hello, everyone, and welcome to our exploration of the medulla oblongata. In this slide, we're viewing a sagittal section of the brain. Notice the medial surfaces of the cerebrum, the encephalon, cerebellum, and the brainstem. The brainstem itself is a stalk-like structure that connects the spinal cord to the forebrain and spans from the posterior commissure down to the lower part of the pyramidal decussation. In this video, we'll be focusing on the medulla oblongata using cadaveric images to visualize its key anatomical features. Here we have a more detailed look at the medulla. It forms the caudal portion of the brainstem lying just above the spinal cord. The cerebellum is positioned dorsally behind it, and in the upper region, the fourth ventricle separates the medulla from the cerebellum. This upper segment of the medulla is sometimes called the open part because of that open space of the fourth ventricle behind it. Now we see a ventral view of the brainstem along with the cerebellum. From this perspective, you can appreciate how the pons, medulla, and midbrain stack together. The cerebellum arches over the posterior aspect, playing a crucial role in maintaining balance and coordination. This slide is a closer view of the ventral surface of the medulla. From here, we can identify the origin of the lower cranial nerves, CN9 to CN12, which emerge from this region. Pyramids. These are elongated ridges on either side of the anterior median fissure, containing corticospinal tracts that eventually decussate in the lower medulla. The anterior median fissure continues downward onto the spinal cord. Olives. In the upper one-third of the medulla, you'll see small oval prominences called olives, formed by the inferior olivary nucleus beneath. They're separated from the pyramids by the anterolateral sulcus, where the rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve attach. Inferior cerebellar peduncles. Lateral to the olives, these structures connect the medulla to the cerebellum. The posterolateral sulcus between the olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle is where cranial nerves 9, 10, and 12 emerge. Turning our attention to the dorsal surface of the medulla, we can divide it into two main parts. One, upper, open part. This region contributes to the floor of the fourth ventricle, second lower closed. Part, here, the central canal, which is continuous with the spinal cord, runs through. On the dorsal aspect, you can see three longitudinal elevations. Tractus gracilis, most medial. Tractus cuneatus, lateral to gracilis. Inferior cerebellar peduncle, farthest lateral in this view. These tracts carry important sensory information upward to the brain. Now we explore the pyramidal decussation, located in the caudal medulla, also known as the major motor decussation. If we take a cross section here, we notice an arrangement somewhat similar to the spinal cord, where central gray matter is surrounded by peripheral white matter. Gray matter, nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus, posterior expansions of gray matter that receive fibers from the tractus gracilis in tractus cuneatus, carrying fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. Spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, a continuation of the substantia gelatinosa from the spinal cord involved in pain, temperature, and crude touch sensation from the face. Interior horn detached. This detaches due to the crossing of pyramidal fibers. It contains part of the spinal nucleus of CN11, the accessory nerve, and extends down into the upper cervical segments. White matter, pyramidal decussation. About 85 to 90% of corticospinal fibers cross here to form the lateral corticospinal tract. This crossing causes the anterior horn to appear separated from central gray matter. Uncrossed fibers. The remaining 10 to 15% stay on the same side as the anterior corticospinal tract. Now we reach the rostral medulla, where we find the olives clearly visible in cross section. Gray matter. Nuclei. Gracilis and cuneatus are now well defined, each capped by its respective tract. 
Tractus Grisalis and Tractus Cuneatus. They process proprioception, fine touch, and vibration. There's also an accessory cuneati nucleus, just dorsolateral to the cuneati nucleus. Spinal nucleus and tract of trigeminal remain in place. The central gray matter contains nuclei like the hypoglossal nucleus, the dorsal nucleus of vagus, and the nucleus of the tractus solitarius, taste and visceral sensations. White matter, sensory decussation. Fibers from gracile and cuneate nuclei, the arcuate fibers, cross to the opposite side, forming the medial lemniscus. This crossing separates the trigeminal nucleus from the central gray region. Pyramidal tracts. Still located ventrally, above the level where they decussate. Medial longitudinal fasciculus, MLF. A compact tract near the midline that coordinates eye movements by interconnecting cranial nerves 3, 4, 6, 8, and 11. Tectospinal tract, positioned dorsally relative to the MLF. Spinocerebellar and lateral spinothalamic tracts, found in the lateral white columns. Spinal lemniscus, formed by the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tracts combined. Moving upward to a mid-medulla cross-section, commonly referred to as the sensory decussation. Gray matter, inferior. Olivary nuclear complex includes the primary olivary nucleus, as well as medial and dorsal accessory olivary nuclei. These coordinate signals between the spinal cord and cerebellum, olivocerebellar fibers. The central gray matter lines the floor of the fourth ventricle, containing nuclei like the hypoglossal nucleus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, vestibular nuclei, and the nucleus of tractus solitarius. Nucleus ambiguous, hidden deeper in the reticular formation, giving motor fibers to certain cranial nerves. Spinal nucleus and tract of trigeminal, still present. Arcuate nuclei, displaced pontine nuclei that send fibers to the opposite cerebellum via anterior external arcuate fibers. White matter, OA sequence of paramedian structures from ventral to dorsal, pyramidal tracts, medial lemniscus, tectospinal tract, and the MLF. Finally, at the pontomedullary junction, we see a cross-section that largely resembles the olive-level medulla, but with a few changes. Gray matter. The vestibular nuclei at this level include the lateral vestibular nucleus, replacing the inferior vestibular nucleus from lower levels. Ocochlear nuclei, dorsal and ventral, also appear here, processing auditory inputs from the cochlear nerve. White matter, a similar arrangement to the rostral medulla, with pyramidal tracts, medial lemniscus, MLF, and tectospinal tracts in consistent relative positions. That's our wrap-up of the medulla oblongata. I hope this detailed walkthrough helps you understand how the external and internal organization of the medulla supports vital functions, ranging from motor control to sensory processing, as well as vital autonomic functions through key cranial nerve nuclei. Thank you for watching.